So today's tutorial would be on dashboard development. So I'm going to share my screen so you can start. I'm on the right. You can hear me when I start. You can see you can see the, the slide confirmation. So oh, I'm going to start with the presentation. If you have questions or you don't see, you can hear me, please speak up. Yeah, up here. Uh, whatever. Okay, thank you. Uh, we can talk about dashboard development. So I'm going to share you today some um, useful tips that can help you build uh, a, a dashboard well. So these tips that I'm going to share with you today are not the only ones. There are a lot of tips out there. So I would encourage you to always research because there will always be new trends and new statistical data for creating data and dashboard so always research but with that being said uh, we're gonna move to the slide tips on dashboard development so the first thing uh, you have to do, you, you are doing you're going to do when you start developing dashboard is design thinking the first step is that so what things you should think when you are thinking about designs the uh, 12 points that i mentioned here so i'm going to go through all of them so the first thing is know the purpose of the dashboard why are you creating it for who are you creating it and why if you identify these questions it can give you some ideas on the dashboard creation uh, the second thing is Decide which content you want to show in your dashboard, especially on the main dashboard that that can be displayed. Decide which content that are more important. You can create different multiple pages and distribute your content there. But for the main dashboard, decide which are the most important content you want to display. Identify them because the uh, dashboard has to be. Not that complex. You, you you don't have to overload it with a lot of information. It can get very complex and tiresome for some clients because you all of us here are developers, but most of our clients are not developers, so they don't care. They just want to see the main points, especially in the front dashboard. So you have to identify which content is important for your work that you want to share. So your dashboard shouldn't be overloaded with a lot of data. And the third thing is decide the data in ratio on the graph you choose to put on your dashboard. Uh, what does it mean data in ratio? We can see this for in the rest of the slide deeply for now, just uh, things like this. We have to decide on data in ratio. We'll uh, deconnect the per letter. So the first one is give number context. So when you put a number on your dashboard, just don't put it uh, Without any context, there has to be some kind of context to, uh, for one person or for clients to understand what the number is about. So, for example, you decide to put this number on your dashboard on some site or on some layout. So, one client wouldn't understand by reading this what does it mean. So, you have to give it context. Either you can give it a context like this one or like this one. This five case. Rebellious type. It shows the bonus area has been 5K, 5K, which is a context for this number. But either you can give it a more context with a more attractive way by comparing this ribbon of this type with the last week. So, this kind of context needs to be added on numbers you want to give attention. So, it is just an, an error most uh, that has been. Uh, that, that is made by developers. So I'm just going to give you 
idea. So when you decide to put these big numbers values, you have to give them context in a more appropriate way. So the fifth one would be to use the most efficient visualization. So, so far we have seen how to use line, line chart, pie chart, area chart on your uh, projects uh, or histogram bar chart. So not every visualization chart you still have used so far as, uh, are the most efficient visualization. In some areas, pie chart and area chart are considered for visualization. So research and choose on your dashboard, which is the most visualization charting mechanism I should use. Usually line chart is preferred. It, it, it differs in on the context of your dashboard. So try to search on that and decide which visualization is better for you and for your client. And the number thing, the six is around your number. So when you uh, draw a chart, don't put the number, the labels, the X and Y labels, don't put numbers like this. This is too long. Make sure you have round the numbers like this. This is not attractive on chart or on dashboard. So always make sure you round numbers. Group related metrics. What does this mean? Means let's say this all uh, Windows box that we are seeing right now. So you decided to put uh, some kind of data here and some kind of data here on your dashboard. Let's say this is your dashboard framework. framework. So, and you put some data here. And it turns out the data you put on the top uh, left is related to the one that you put it on the right button. So putting it here, like spreading the data all over the place is not advisable. So make sure if the one that you put here and here are similar in their context or on their data, if they have related metrics, make sure you put them next to each other or top them better. So you have to group related metrics on your dashboard together instead of spreading out everywhere. It's not advisable and it's not attractive also. So make sure related metrics are put on the same layout in your dashboard. There is be consistent. What does it mean when you say be consistent? Be consistent can be in the font type you, you choose on your framework. So if you choose the font type on your dashboard, it has to be similar on your whole app. Using different font types is also not advisable. So be consistent with using with your font, or if you use a color in your dashboard, be consistent with that. And the other thing you, you should be consistent is, especially when you use this like visualization techniques like line chart, bar chart. Uh, if you are using, let's say there's a data frame or a data that shows how much uh, sales is made in two different months. So in January, in December, let's give it an example. And you decided to put the January sales and the December sales on your dashboard. And you decided on the January, it is the same data. The only difference is the time stamp. So, but you guys decided to put the January data with bar chart in the December uh, data with line chart. This is not advisable because it is the same data. The first time the client see the January data, he's seeing it in the bar chart, and it's likely to be that client is likely to be to expect when it says the uh, December the same bar chart but with different data. So if you are uh, using, if you are trying to show the same data with different uh, visualization, usually it's not advisable again. So try to be consistent depending on your data, the visualization type, type you're going to use. But as a similar, just use the same data. It can uh, feel like you are repeating your, te your visualization technique, but don't, don't worry about that. The right way is to use the same thing for the same data. Okay, so the number eight would be, uh, no, number nine should be show hierarchy. What does that mean? So usually, this is a statistical study. When we, close, when we open application, the first thing our eyes goes to would be to this side, to the top left side. So if you have this data that you want to emphasize, usually developers put that data on this part of the site. 
I, our eyes first go to, to this side. This is just a statistical study. So uh, try to understand the hierarchy in how you should put data a window. So try to put the more emphasizing data on this side. There's an, uh, an hierarchy we should, where we should put things. So try to research on that and make sure uh, you lay out your data that way. So follow your hierarchy. And the uh, number nine, okay, I repeat the numbers here. The number thing would be use clear, clear label. So on your charts, the label should be clear. They have to indicate what the chart, the purpose of the chart. So have the clear labels. And the number thing would be remember every dashboard you're creating, it is for the people. It's not for you, okay? So the dashboard should not be understood by only you. Always it is for your clients, so you have to consider your clients when you make your dashboard. So the dashboard you're going to create for older people has to be it has to be different for the one you create for the younger people. So you have to consider your clients, what kind of people they are, and how their level of understanding when you create your dashboard. So you can make it a simple dashboard or a complex dashboard. So at the end of the day, clients decide on your work and make sure they are the first priority in building dashboards. So you have to think like them to build a, a, a useful dashboard. And uh, number 11 would be don't overdo it. Sometimes trying to be perfect, we can overdo things and that can uh, lead to a failure. So you make it as simple as it can. It's not about, about doing it really hard, it's just about doing it smart. So try to be more free when you create your dashboard. And the uh, last would be keep evolving. This is put it here because every time technology is, there's a new technology, a new version, a new update all the time, and new tools are being created every time. So you always have to keep evolving with the new technology, with the new trends. So you always have to make sure you are up to date with the newest technology saver, with the newest programming language, so you can just go along with the world. So make sure you always keep evolving with the changes that happen in this area. So now we're gonna go back to this number three. Uh, I'm gonna, so the reason that I decided to put a pressure on data encryption is because an important topic, especially for data science. So please uh, keep follow, we're gonna see this one uh, in detail. So this is data encryption, what does that mean? So this concept is first created by a man named Edward Stutt. So he is the one, he's the person who came up with, with this idea. So he says that data encryption encourages chart creators to examine if all elements in the chart are relevant in the chart message. Uh, so in his words, he said, above all else, so show the data. It's not about, we don't have to worry about more about how pretty the chart is, we have to more worry about the data that that chart shows. So we have to, he clearly indicates we have to worry about the data in the chart. So how much data are we supposed to put on that chart? Which are the most relevant? So this is about, this is all about data ink ratio. We have to make sure the ink or the print we put on that chart is fair, is important. Not everything has to be put in our charts or in our visualization. So this is the whole concept, what data ink ratio means. So this is, there's a definition of data ink ratio. It's the amount, it, it represents the data compared to the amount of ink, ink used in representation, including number of elements. So to understand this concept, I have two examples in chart. So that will clear up your clear up for you more. But uh, I want you to have these three points when you think about data ratio, clear message, saving time, and saving space. So the first thing, your chart needs to have a clear message. If that have as you put it on your charts are conflicting the message that you want to pass, those data has to be removed from that chart. So the first thing, your chart or your visualization has to have a clear message. It has to have, it has to have safe time. When clients use your see your visualization, 
they didn't they shouldn't as uh, spend more time trying to understand it it should be not hard for your client it should be easy so your visualization should save time your time and their time because if your charge if your visualization is complex not only will be your client's time that will be uh, in waste it will also be yours because they will always keep asking you to give them a description and that's just uh, waste everybody's time so it has to save time the visualization and the other thing you have to save space uh, because sometimes you want to show more data in your dashboard so if you waste if you uh, waste space on one chart on one visualization it's likely you will have more spaces on your window and your dashboard to show other contents of your findings so you have to make sure these three things are included on your visualization on your charts make sure it uh, it has it's sent a quick message it saves everybody's time and it can save space so let's say by example what data increase you can do for you so let's say there is a chart like this and there's a chart like this which one is easy for you in the eye for me this one is right i hope everyone has the same observation so these grids you put here are unnecessary uh, this data these numbers and these numbers give the same explanation so there's no need to put both of them on, on a similar chart so you have you to remove these data this is unnecessary data this is about this is what data impression would give you this it would consider this parts unnecessary so you should remove them you should remove the grid and I, if you can see the number is put the whole number is put so round the numbers which make it more clean more easy to read what if yeah this every uh, the color the color is okay you can put it upgrade on this but now you can see how clear it is how clean it is and how eye-catching this one is so it might may make you feel like you're doing great by adding more data but that's not the right way to view the dashboard or a chart we have another example also uh, this data shows the app downloads if, if you can see to get the more download application so the chart is uh, drawn like this uh, if i can ask you there's a lot of unnecessary, unnecessary data here for example these apps show which this this belongs to so by seeing whatsapp i can see this part that is called whatsapp by seeing the tiktok i can uh, know this line is for tiktok but then again there's another description here that can also show me the black is tiktok and there's also another explanation here to indicate me this line is tiktok and this one is whatsapp so there are three types of describing the same thing which is unnecessary in the, in, to have in one graph i can just use this x label explanation i don't need these icons or this one so this is what data is trying to teach you these are unnecessary data in your dashboard so you should remove them uh, the number is not rounding up as you can see here and there's a grid which is not necessary and you can just try to decrease this font here the app downloads it's too big what else can you change and it can show you here the header itself is descriptive app downloads in media so one can see this header and this uh, know what the chart is talking about so there is no need to have another label header on this side million of downloads and up the header is enough so in this step we can see the line how we can change it and the background also can uh, lose focus of the user's view of the client view so it's not that much necessary so remove it like this where it in this state all these data is necessary to remove the grid the next one we can move the grid again so we can round up the numbers here uh, we put it uh, we remove these labels here and if you have an option or uh, the tool to make the labels uh, to be written on, on the chart, you've done, but if not, it's okay. You can also uh, put your labels like this. It doesn't matter. Uh, so uh, having also these different colors in bar chart, mostly it's not a good practice. 
So I just pick one color and try to, or, or in this case, just border one with the highest downloads. TikTok, WhatsApp, and then you can give them bold uh, color in the other, so light color. And this is the final output according to the ratio. This is a better for a client view to have uh, it put it in a ascending order and just highlight the one with the most download with color, remove the, I can see the data clearly here. I can get all the data I need. It shows me up to almost a million. So by reading 850, I know it's a million. So it's 850 million downloads. So it's easier like this. So data impression give you this idea how you can how you should represent your data on your dashboard. So you, this is a concept. There's a lot of reference on data in ratio. So I have put that on the reference. So let's check that out. And this is about the tips I want to give you in building dashboard. And the other thing is uh, data dashboard responsive. So this uh, you you have to make sure your dashboard is responsive, especially in your career as a professional living for someday, having a dashboard responsibility is important. What does it mean when we say responsive? It means the dashboard you are building on your desktop, desktop has to be compatible when it's being displayed on mobile devices, on tabs, and every devices. It has to be size compatible. So you have to make your dashboard responsive to every devices that is going to be likely to be run to. So uh, how to do this is by mastering CSS scientific language. So every day I would recommend you to study uh, how you can be a better CSS, uh, how, how you can be better in CSS language. So in the week zero, uh, on the React tutorial, I have shared uh, CSS resources for beginners. So make sure you still are practicing your CSS skill because it's really, it's really uh, important uh, in dashboard development. So if you are going to present uh, your work in different frameworks, front end frameworks, CSS is a background. So you need this skill. So I would recommend you should make sure CSS, you study CSS. So there are a lot of uh, branches to CSS. Like Tailwind CSS, the one that I showed you before, uh, SAS uh, SSS. So uh, the main thing is every of these branches still they use the main language CSS. So if you know how to use CSS, you will understand the other types of CSS out there. So for now, I would recommend using CSS. Understanding how to use CSS is enough. If you understand this one, the others will be easy to understand. So. As a beginner, make sure you understand uh, this style sheet. And the advice I want to give you is uh, like people can judge you about what you wear, your work will be judged how, by how you show it. As a backend developer, you, you guys can spend more time, you can do a lot of work, and you can do the most genius work on your backend, on your notebooks, on your Python modules. But it doesn't matter if you don't know how you should represent it. Because presentation really matters. So you should take how to build dashboard development seriously. Because if you when you go up to the current level in your work, uh, time someday, your presentation matters. How much genius you are, how much smart you are. If you don't know how to make a presentation for your work, it doesn't matter. And most likely, your clients are not developers like you. They have no idea how development work. They only know, they only judge you by what they see. So you have to make sure like how you can make your most neat when you have important meetings, you have to make sure your dashboard is neat also. So it's presentation is really important. So I would advise you to take it very seriously. And the other is deployment. Deployment, yeah, uh, depending on the, dashboard framework to use, there are a lot of deployments. Uh, I put this one uh, considering you are building on Streamly dashboard, so you can follow the steps to deploy your app on Heroku, or you can do this, uh, the Streamly deployment also, and have your own deployment. 
So if you are using your React, I, again, you can use Heroku. Uh, this just you can figure this out. Uh, there are a lot of YouTube references on this, so we shouldn't worry about that. But uh, every dashboard needs deployment. Uh, so I'm going to finalize this station uh, by quoting what it what I've said on dashboard uh, development. It said, never underestimate, underestimate your audience. It is the most common mistake made by presenters. It is not about you anymore. It's about your audience relationship with your content. So you have to remember that. Your work is not about you if you are doing it for someone else. It's about the client. It's about the audience. So you have to understand what your audience wants. The dashboard you, you, you have to build for an older person shouldn't be the same as the one you can build for a younger, more skilled, or knowledgeable person. So you have to always uh, take an account your audience needs when you build a dashboard. What do they want? How do they understand my content? The more I make this simpler, the more they would likely to get it. You have to try to be on your audience shoes to understand that the dashboard is going to do. So it's not about you, it's about the audience. So don't forget this uh, code. And I have put some references here you know, for the data impression and everything else, but I want to show you this, show you this part. It's driven.com. Uh, you can follow the steps that I told you or other steps out there by searching to build a useful dashboard. But there are also options for you to help you to create the dashboard, especially if you don't have time to draft the design itself. Uh, this site has options for dashboards. A lot of options for that. A lot of developers around the world put these dashboards here for everyone to. So let's say I want a data science board. This dashboard can be used. You can use this dashboard here on your application directly. Just need to learn how to use CSS because everything here, the, the Layouts here are being structured using the CSS style sheet. So you can uh, get motivation on how to have a beautiful dashboard ideas from here. So it's search it over here or search like this here. For example, let's say I want a data science dashboard. You can see, I don't think you can see it, right? You can see what I'm trying to show you. Uh, okay, sorry. No, we can't, sir. Okay, how about now? Can you see it now? The... Can you see the this part? The data science dashboard? Yeah, no. So here, this dribble.com, I have put the link on the slide. So what it can do for you is it can give you ideas to better dashboard development sites. So this are a lot, uh, most, a lot of developers out there put their work in this uh, dribble.com site. So it can give other developers, either you can copy their uh, dashboard for your own benefit. But like I said, you have to know how to use CSS, and so it just they have this beautiful dashboards. Everyone and most uh, there are a lot of beautiful dashboards that can motivate you to create 
uh, a better dashboard. So I, this dashboard came when I researched dash, data scientific dashboard. For a lot of purposes, just write the idea that the purpose of the dashboard that you want to and uh, there's a dashboard that is built like for that purpose, you will probably see the result here. Uh, in the same way, pin interest also gives you the same advantage. So uh, that, let's check this site, they're really useful. And the other, these two I put here, the Antlash and Pixel.com. Uh, if, you if you want, usually most front, front end developers know this force resources. Uh, Amplastic can give you unlimited number of inmates in, air, in any area. Pixel does the same thing. Uh, in addition to it, gives you uh, fewer minutes videos also. So if you want to style or make it your dashboard more beautiful and you want uh, related inmates to the work you are still doing, you can add resources of beautiful inmates and pixel videos in these two sites. So this is about presentation. Okay, thank you. If you have any question, you can forward. Thank you. So first of all, is, is it clear the message I want to us today? You can start by giving confirmation if it's clear or not. I think it's clear, I think, but it's not a much uh, complex idea. But if you have a question, please go watch. In class mode, how you can connect to the computer. You uh, have you done the Wikipedia in case you stream the dashboard? So you you should use you should follow the same steps if you have used Streamlit for your Wikipedia project. Put the data you have found uh, in this project in your existing database and access it from your stream dashboard and display it in different styles. Did that answer your question? Just try to use these tips that I gave you today, and there are a lot out there to make your dashboard more professional. Okay, so could you see the video, uh, the stream deep dashboard, how we can create? I have shown some of it on the video tutorial. So check out the video there and try to go along. Uh, the, the, the things that are in the, in the stream deep would be how to connect it with a SQL database, database. But I have shared uh, a video on that, uh, the slide that I shared in the video project. So please check that. Uh, finally, you can, I think you can share a screenshot, but you will get more points if you deploy it and share it than it. So, depending on your time, try to, I would recommend everyone to deploy it. I think it's easy to deploy a stream big dashboard. Yes, yes. You need to connect use StreamBit with your database and retrieve the data frame from your database. I have put the slide on the week one for that, so you can check that there. But I can also share you the link here. Is there any question or Daniel, you can continue? Um, hello, Rahmat. 
first of all, thank you for the presentation. I have a few questions. And my first question was, are we going to use Streamlit or React? It's already answered. I guess we are going to use the Streamlit. Uh, so my question is, can we use React component inside the Streamlit project? I guess someone was telling us uh, yesterday, I guess. Maybe Mr. Rehabibar. So can we use uh, React component in Stream Lead project? Because um, I, I can work uh, better than on uh, React better than Stream Lead. Yeah, you can use React as the whole framework for your front end. Stream Lead is not a requirement. Okay, okay. Thanks. You are that, but I don't think there uh, there's a way to connect the React component to Stream Lead. I never used it before or heard. Someone uses it. So I don't know if there's a way you can use that, right? There are two different languages. This is Python, mm -hmm. that one is JavaScript. So I don't know if there is a way to can make a connection between those. But you okay, can use thanks. React. Okay. Thank you. So if that when you deploy your if you are using Streamlit, you, when you deploy it, you have to deploy it over the internet. You can share as your local host. There are three uh, softwares to deploy. If it's React, there's uh, Heroku can help. Uh, on Heroku, you can deploy up to five projects for free. You know, there's also Netfly for React, and Streamlit has its own deployment. It's also free. If you notice that after you run with Streamly, there's a different option. I think that can give you a free internet uh, URL to deploy your local, I mean, your app over the internet. So there are people on the Wix Zero who have, who have deployed their work. So ask on the Slack. I'm sure they will guide you. But it's, it's really easy. I think it's uh, Abraham. I think it's on the Ten Academy uh, YouTube channel. Uh, so join, uh, search that one, and you'll find all the videos that have been uploaded so far. If you haven't found it, uh, reach out for the Ten XP. Yep. Really, Abdul Hamid. I I haven't checked Heroku recently, but I have. The information I have to, it's used to access five projects for free. So I guess you have you guys have to find another deployment mechanisms that can deploy your apps for free. One example is there is Netfly for the one of you for those of you who decide to use the app. Netfly things like this. Thank you for the information, Abdul Hamid. So, uh, any question or confusion on the project? So, again, to be a better dashboard developer de uh, in development, uh, you have to also know how to use CSS. It's really important. To, it's the tool that can give you a very attractive uh, way of making sure you. It's, it's that tool to make it an attractive uh, dashboard. So please practice, just keep certain it every day to practice your, or to improve your CSS skill. Just can give you the power to do everything you want to make the dashboard more attractive. So don't forget to practice your CSS skill. Okay, if you, any question? So I'm going to take the five minutes as, as a response that you have understood everything. So if you don't, uh, if you have any confusion and everything, please reach out to me on the Slack and me and internet. So we'll help you as much as we can. Uh, I guess this would be the end of our tutorial session. So thank you for being here, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.